Hello and welcome to Nobody Meet Somebody, the podcast where two comedians who are currently nobody meet somebody who is famous. My name is Mary Picarazzi. And I'm Tanvir Arora. In today's episode, we got to talk to George Basil. He's been on many popular Netflix and HBO shows like Flaked, Wrecked, and Crashing. Oh, crashing, crashing, gotcha. <laughs> crashing. Oh. Yes. and leave that guy. I don't know. The first time I watched, I cringe. I'm like, this guy, no. But the more I watch, I'm like, I like this guy. I actually, I want to hang out with Leaf, you know? Agreed, agreed. Like, I wanted to hate him. And then the more you learn to be like, oh, you know, it's not bad. I can deal with this. <laughs> like, if, if, you arrive, if you had to have your wife leave you, that's not the worst guy you could possibly be. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I'm so wow. excited to talk to him. All right. Well, without further ado, let's talk to George. Hi, George. How are you? Hi, I'm good, Mary. How are you? I'm excited. I, we are super excited to do this interview. I'm not going to lie. You. I was yeah. very late to the crashing train. Uh, <laughs> only crashing because I'm train. Too- those those two words together are a new <laughs> thing entirely. This is true. <laughs> I realized that as I said it, but uh, I was I was late to the crashing uh, uh, phenomenon. Uh, only yeah. because I'm too cheap to get HBO. But now, <laughs> just caught up. It's amazing. Nice. I'm excited. Nice. Yeah. And, I, and I'll be honest. I did not. I had my doubts that is it going to be really you or someone who looks yeah. like you. Uh, so this is no. This is actually. I mean, it's it's great. We are excited to have you on the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm I'm excited too. It was a great job. I wish those kinds of jobs. You know, you never want them to stop, and then all of a sudden they abruptly stop, and then you're like, oh, well, I guess I can be a gardener. <laughs> Well, I was retroactively uh, upset about it, so. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, you came late to the game, and then <laughs> you were upset later. late. <laughs> Two yeah, years later, like, upset, yeah. <laughs> totally. You're like, when All did right. this show stop airing? <laughs> In the I 90s, to- Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my childhood. Um yeah. I'm just going to pretend I was born in the 90s, guys. I'm so young. I, uh, I was going to point <laughs> out. Tanvir, you were about to point. Yeah, you were about to shine a light on that, and then. Good that you did it. Yeah, that's why he's sitting in the darkness. Yeah, there's no light around him. Yeah. 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 You got him, Mike. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We have our handy dandy questions in my shiny red hat and Tanvir and his Pyrex cup. Hoping for that uh, sponsorship one day. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go ahead and get started. All right. First question. Ooh, best celebrity encounter. Oh, good question. Best celebrity encounter. Man, I have so many bad ones. It's hard, <laughs> to, <laughs> hard to think of good ones. Well, oh, take a bad one, too, if you want to do that. You know what? Uh, no, the bad ones are way too – they're similar, and they're my fault. They're not their <laughs> fault. They're probably – you know. Um, best celebrity encounter was definitely uh, – I was with my daughter, and um, – we were in a grocery store. I had picked her up from school and we were in a grocery store here in LA and I was about, uh, she had gotten like gum. A kid had it like intentionally put gum in her hair and it was a big old wad of it too. And like, she was pretty upset about it. And I was too, just, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, uh, we're standing in line at this, at uh, this grocery store and I'm and she's like what do we do about this do we have to cut it and all this other stuff and then I hear a, a guy go uh you could freeze it and I'm like huh? and I look up and the guy in front of me in line in front of both of us in line is Tim Roth from <laughs> everything man from <laughs> Reservoir Dog I mean from Four Rooms like I remember you know he's he's just like for me uh he's a huge huge deal (laughs) and i was like huh (laughs) and i couldn't i couldn't even like i i was struck i was just like i can freeze it okay tim roth uh how do i freeze stuff and he was like okay i should go did that work did you freezing it uh no i think we just went home (laughs) what did we do what did we Pe- do? Peanut butter. Peanut butter is the cure all. Peanut butter takes it. Is out. it? Yeah. How? 
How does it do that? I don't know. I think it's the oils or something. I, I'm not a science person on that. But I just know peanut butter. No, I think you are a science person, Mary. And I'd like <laughs> I to. went to science school. I know. It's yeah, peanut butter. Yeah. I went to science college. <laughs> and it's just peanut butter studies. Uh, I, yeah. And I, you know, I get to work with really cool people that are celebrities. Or I get, uh, you know, you go to... Uh, before when there was a such thing as parties, you'd, you'd go to parties and then you'd be like, oh, hey, that's that guy from that show or that's that lady from that movie. And I don't really care. It's like, <laughs> if they're the same kind of idiot that I am, then they're just idiots. <laughs> you know? So good. it's easy. But Tim Roth to me was is like legendary. I, is he knighted? Because he should be. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not up Sir my Tim knighthood. Roth? Yeah, I don't, I'm not up in my knighthood. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you should drop out of science school and maybe go to, like, go to night school, <laughs> monarchy school. Yeah, go to night school. <laughs> nice, nice. Tavir, what you got? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, your hardest audition and also the easiest audition ever. Cool. Um, gosh, Tavir, the the hardest audition. Uh, that's a tough one because like you, they all suck <laughs> no matter what it's so hard to you know feel inspired uh, and then do it either in a room with people right. or um, now it's been on zoom or it's like self tapes which is right. probably in my opinion self tapes are the hardest thing because you're like just the lighting's you. bad it's not like everything's like bad everything, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like you're you do it and then you're like okay i did it 50 times uh <laughs> i can't I can't watch them so i have to have a friend if whoever's helping me put myself on tape has to watch them select the ones and send them in i never ever want to see it again and wow. it's it, yeah it, it, i don't have a a good critical sense that's not completely uh like abusive to myself <laughs> you know i'll watch it and be like oh i hate that oh i hate that oh i hate me oh i hate me. maybe that's how you select it right which one you hate hate the least that's the yeah. one that said exactly. <laughs> true i should that's right that's the that is the grade that it should go um so specifically let's do the first one i was living in austin texas i looked uh and someone told me that they were making a monty python movie this is like 1999 or no this is i was out of high school this is like 2003 2002 and they were like we're holding auditions in new york city and it's open auditions and i didn't know what the hell that was so i was like i could probably do that an open audition <laughs> and so uh, you know, I think I'd taken a couple of improv classes, so I, I knew that I had some sort of confidence somewhere if I was in front of people. So I was just kind of counting on that. But it was going to be the the Graham Chapman story, um, and they were they were casting for all the money money Python people. I was just going into audition. I'd never done it before. I didn't go to school for theater or anything like that. <clears throat> excuse me and so i fly to new york and i go to the audition like place the studio on the morning there's a line <laughs> all the way down the block oh and gosh. down the avenue it was just people waiting and it was raining and people were just waiting like in costume so when we wow. say like knights and kings and queens oh. and stuff, it was huge and i'm just standing there by myself i don't know anybody in the city and I'm just like, well, I'm going to go in and do a wet audition. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing we can say for sure. Um, and then I went in and I, they give you sides, but they were also like, you know, if you have something prepared, you can come in and, and do that. <clears throat> and I didn't, I didn't have anything prepared. Um, and so I just went in, I had read the, the, the little sides that they had a few times and I was like, no, I think I'm going to do something. I'm going to make it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I improvised a little scene with a veterinarian and a dog and, a, and the dog was humping its owner. And <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> like 
Not How did you know horrible. it is horrible? <laughs> oh, they were looking at me <laughs> the whole time. And then when it was done, they were just like, <laughs> okay, uh, it's raining outside. Maybe you should go. <laughs> like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I did that. I've done that a couple times. Excuse me. I want to, uh, I think I'm. I'm going to clean this little guy right here. And I'm going to give you guys a real, it's a magic trick. When I come back, it's not going to be me. It's like one of those TikTok videos. Yeah, that's what's going to be. Chat roulette. And I guess the the best audition, God, I'm sure it was, I'm sure there was an audition that I felt awesome about and I didn't get it. So I probably have have forgotten it because that's the thing with them is like you do so many at some point that you right. just vault them they have to go in a vault and you just like burn the vault every 10 years or so <laughs> so that nice. you don't even have any like there's no history of this self plausible deniability <laughs> exactly you're just like that never happened i'm still 22 thank goodness <laughs> uh all right so what show or movie are you currently watching Ooh, what show or movie am I currently watching? Well, we were all just about, the fam is about to sit down and watch Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, me too. I haven't seen it in a long time, though. I think yeah. I saw it in the theaters, and that was well, the only time I've seen it. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I, it'll be really interesting to watch again, especially since everybody in it is so talented and like have gone on to such great things. Like You think that's Steve Carell's first one of his first serious yeah. movies. Yeah. And then what series? Oh, and then my daughter never watched. I never watched uh, Malcolm, in, Malcolm in the Middle. I TV like kind of phased out for me when I was like 19. And I liked it that way. So I I committed to it. Right. So pretty much. I, I watched Sopranos this past year. Again, that's an important show. You, you have to kind of... <laughs> It's right up there with the wire. It's with the wire. It's exactly, yeah. They're yeah. in that world of like super narrative or, yes. or whatever, where it's like, man, the thing is styly. All the actors are awesome. Everything's iconic. Like, yeah. Don't totally. hit me. I haven't watched either of them, but I will. I'm going to watch Sopranos. Yeah, this year. This year, I'm going to watch it. Wait a you year should. quarantine, Tanvir, and you still didn't watch it. I just I watched know. Game of Thrones. So, I mean, I, Game of Thrones is that's you're on the same. It's the same like ballpark. It's like big epic show. Right. I haven't seen Game of Thrones yet, um, but I will say the reason that Sopranos came up for me to watch was because on the set of Crashing, um, one of the writers, they were talking about Sopranos, much like we are just now. And then Tim Beer was like, "Oh, don't hate me. I, I haven't seen it." Well, this writer was like. It's like Judd, blah bitty, blue bitty, blue bitty, bomb bitty, bomb bitty. Everybody's talking about Sopranos. And then this one writer is like, Yeah, I haven't seen it. <laughs> and like, I didn't see, I haven't seen Judd get mad. He's a comedy director, he's a comedy <laughs> guy, he's a fun dude. That guy was mad. <laughs> he was like, Wait a second. You're telling me you work in television on my show and you haven't seen the greatest show of all time. And he like laid into him a little bit. And at that point, I just kind of was like, <laughs> and I went and watched it. <laughs> you were Homer Simpson in the, in the shrubs. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, last thing to go through and then straight to HBO max to watch it. That's funny. That's yeah. funny. So in uh, when we release this podcast, I'm gonna edit out where I said I haven't watched it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to take not, my chance. <laughs> yeah. Do not put yourself in that position. All right. So we read about you that you are vegan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Oh man, favorite food's gonna be something out of my mom's kitchen. And it'll be a Greek dish that she has been, because uh, I went vegetarian when I was like 19. So nice. it's been forever. It's just a part of it. And vegan was uh, a little later, maybe when I was in my mid 20s or late 20s. But no matter what stage of it I've been in, my mom has always just met me there. You know, she's a, a wonderful Greek cook. And uh she's always adapted every single recipe in ways that i'm just like 
Right. I, it's fascinating because I remember I, I'd eat all these things like, you know, pasticho, musaka, all these like very dense, meaty things that are and creamy and cheesy. Oh, no. <laughs> <I> got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> uh, but they're rich foods. And, and I remember the tastes so well. And somehow she's like nailed them all, even the little tiny like nuanced flavors. She just figured it out and... I mean, God bless her. She's like, she'll cook it up every time. And then if she ever comes to LA, uh, she obviously cooks and we eat like just stoners constantly. Like you just don't stop eating. And then she fills my freezer with all this. Oh, nice. (laughs) That's most of the best. That's what I mean. It's like, uh, yeah, triple duty cooking. But, oh, let's see. So it would be one of hers. And it, it would probably be one of the ones that I just mentioned, like moussaka, probably. I'd say moussaka. It's like, uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's like scalloped potatoes, mm. uh, cut, like um, same type of thing where it's like sliced eggplant. And and then they usually use like ground up dead thing, but instead she puts um, like – textured vegetable protein or seitan or any of the the mock meats and substitutes. And then for the bechamel, which is usually like a heavy cream cheese thing, I don't even know what she does, but it's magic. And I'm just like sitting there eating it. Maybe she's lying. (laughs) (laughs) It is bechamel. (laughs) What if she's like, yeah, she just like tastes the same, doesn't it? But (laughs) I got to call it. That would be be I feel like if your mother takes the time to cook for you, I'm pretty sure she's not like, I'm just going to start fronting with him now. I couldn't figure Uh, it out. Yeah, traps. What a mom (laughs) trap, dude. (laughs) Which is also like what moms would do. So it could be either way. You never know. I know. I know. You might have found out your whole life is a lie right now. I have to like watch her the next time she makes it. (laughs) Make sure she's not sneaking. (laughs) So what is on your music playlist right now? You guys are out in, you're in California, so you're out. Still, you guys are still quarantined until June. Then you guys yeah. are opening back up. Welcome to Freedom. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, where are you guys? We're in Texas. So, oh, well, you're in Texas. We've been kind of hey, free yeah. for a while. <laughs> We've been open. Good. Uh, let's see. I'll for better or for worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's everything. We don't know what's going on anymore, dude. Everybody's like, okay. Um, Irma Thomas, lovely. Lovely Irma Thomas, like jazz vocalist. Yeah. Uh, Curtis Knight. Um, I'm just like kind of scrolling down. I love what you're looking at. Yeah. (laughs) Well, because I just, I'll just shuffle all this because I love everything basically. So, uh, you know, there's Kendrick Lamar, Richard Swift, uh, Frank Ocean. I'm a huge fan of Frank Ocean. The Clash. I like Anderson Pack a lot. There's some weird Greek music on here, like little weird village. Here, I'll play some. Ready? Get ready. This guy's gonna freak you out. See if you can hear. It. Can you hear it? <laughs> that's like cool. that's like that's like green cajunto music. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So I'm Mexican. I'm like, this sounds like my people. Wait a second. That's what I mean, dude. Yeah, they have their own version of uh, of like mariachis. Ah, that's it. I could survive in Greek in any Greek country. Yeah, you said totally. you said that last time about India as well, Mary. I am uh-huh. a I can survive in a lot of places. <laughs> I'm just ready travel. to go. <laughs> I can't wait to go to India. I haven't been there to beer, and I'm like, uh, we oh. want to go. We gotta go together. I, I, I'll, okay. I'll be your guy. Yeah, that's what I would love. Yes, that's what I want. I, I would love to do that. Uh, originally, uh, is your family originally from the north or the south or somewhere? Oh, between? somewhere in between Mumbai. Mumbai. Okay. Yeah, that's a big. City. That's a big city. Yeah, that, that's what yeah. I said. It's New York, uh, but with Indian people. Right. That's what Mumbai is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like Athens, Athens, Mumbai. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. But no. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yo, this is one of my favorite questions that I had for this show. Um, the crashing character, Leaf. 
how close is that to you in real? Like, so we read about you, vegan, lived in Austin, the same kind of vibe. Uh, when I watch Crashing, I'm like, Leaf, this feels like George in real. I don't know. You tell me yeah. how. Well, it's easy to use those similar characteristics between me and a character when it's somebody like Leaf. Or right. I did a show for TBS called Wrecked, and the guy Chet, my character in that, is, again, it's similar. It's not, he's not quite as hippie as he's got a lot more like weird anger and stuff but for the most part he's just kind of like hey and man it's really easy to act like hey <laughs> <laughs> you know it really is it's like very pleasant it's light it's positive leaf uh you know i don't i don't really think of myself as very spiritual i mean i like to garden and like interact with plants and my dog, like there are things about life that feel mm -hmm. like great and, and, and emotionally uh, fulfilling and spiritual in that sense. But I don't have anything that I really go to in terms of prayer or uh, churches or anything like that. So uh, that's a difference that right. Leaf would have. Like he definitely subscribed to you know, whether it's Ram Das, whether it's whatever it is, yeah. maybe it's all of them. <laughs> but I, but then I can apply the funny thing of like, well, he's probably mistaken. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he probably misquotes as more than he actually quotes correctly. Right. So um, what I'm thinking right now is like the episode that I did with, but first of all, I'm not going to, you know, be an adulterer or whatever, or help some. I'm not. I'm not I don't sleep with women that are married, <laughs> for the most part. Um, most that you'll admit on a podcast, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't say how many. I that too, but uh, that that's like a. It's not a character flaw of Leaf. It's a. It's just a characteristic. Okay, it's yeah. like who he is, right? And that's not who I am. So there are those kinds of differences. And then the philosophical differences, like I mentioned, and right. then um, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is like the episode where him and Pete sort of walk around the whole time, and he's that like, "Hey, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great." That was a fun one to shoot. But um, if my friend is in some sort of turmoil or whatever, I think I'm probably more prone to listen hmm. instead of try to guide anybody. You know, I, I'm I'm still I go to therapy every week. Like I'm trying to figure it out on a, on a deep level. So I don't, I don't usually um, speak as the guide. I'm usually just kind of being like, okay, well, if you need to talk, we'll talk. And that's great. Uh, I can listen. So for Lee's character, was it always intention to be as long running as it was? Cause it seemed like initially he could have been a quick character that would have been like, Oh, we hate this guy. And then he kind of falls out. And, but I mean, his dynamic throughout the whole series was, I mean, it helped you see from a viewer's perspective, the different yeah. side of the story, right? So was he always yeah. intended to be throughout the series? Man, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I think probably because he was in the pilot so much, obviously, mm -hmm. as like you're saying, like the big crux of, you know, you're sleeping with my wife, but you're right. He could have easily just yeah. disappeared. He could have, you know, him and um jess could have broken up and then yeah. she she's a single woman you know in new york and pete's a single stand-up um uh, and to be honest we shot a lot more stuff with leaf that's not in the show like we there was a day of brooklyn where we shot um and it was one of the most fun in my opinion i loved it just maybe because it was just all about me and i was like <laughs> hey we can just get Screen time. <laughs> is, is it there? Is it somewhere online or HBO or somewhere? Oh, the, 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 the deleted scene? No, yeah. I, probably not. I only have a picture of it because it was Leaf uh, from that episode. They follow, Pete follows him to his school and he's in front. Is it in the show? It's not in the show. No. I, I, I'm in front of my classroom and I'm like, okay, class. And, and I'm teaching them in a leaf way. And, uh, I remember that being a lot of fun because these kids are like kids. So they're just like, 
what? Hey, can we do this? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a teacher, man. I'm an actor. I'm waiting for them to say action. And then I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I'm not your dad. I don't, you know, I'm not going to grade you. Uh, funny. I'm trying yeah. to win an Emmy. <laughs> so close. So close. It's so close. Ooh, what is your favorite exercise? Uh, running. Got... Yeah. Running. Yeah. Are you like a uh, have to run every day, every other day? Um, I don't have to, but if I do, I'm pleasant. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, I'm cagey. It it takes something out of me that I like not being in me. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. It's a good. Uh, yeah, I, I I love to run. It's hard to find the time every single day to do it, but I know that like getting a good solid sweat is just for me yeah. super important. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm getting older. My knees are, I can't run outside. I'm realizing anymore or on concrete. Right. So it's like treadmill basically with like super cushioned shoes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's going I downhill. Like, I feel you on that one. Really? Too. Yeah, dude. <laughs> really, so yeah, I'm, I'm almost around 40. So yeah, yeah. Super yeah. cushiony shoes are, are plus or plus. Definitely. On the knees. Yeah, yeah. And ankles. Yeah. I'm past 40. I'm looking, I'm looking back and being like, Oh, 40 would be cool. <laughs> what is your favorite excuse oh yeah <laughs> I, I, thought this was, I thought this was a fun question like how do you fun one, yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i'm a mom i use my kid nine times out of ten. Oh, she's not feeling well she had a bad day yeah, I didn't right. stay home. Indeed. what's the, well, that's a, you took it right out of my mouth it's <laughs> the top one is definitely like ooh, she's sick yeah <laughs> Yeah, she got a cold, and oh, thank you, thank you. No, I'm, I, she'll be fine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, you know, like Lula's eating ice cream and like hiding, and um, well, that's the easiest. Sick, the being sick is the hardest one. Now you can't be like, you're like, oh no, no, she's fine, she's fine. Oh she's yeah, not they're like, oh, is she okay? We, oh no, don't bring her over next month. Like, exactly. Fine. They cut you off, and they're no longer your friend. <laughs> it goes, there um, goes a strict timeline on that. Yeah, uh, that's probably my favorite my favorite uh, excuse. But man, there's so many. I'm trying to think. I'm also trying to like not use excuses, and if that means that I have to have an honest conversation with someone, and it's difficult, and me being like, "Yeah, I'm not driving to your house like I thought I was. I wanted to, and I told you I was, and now I'm not." And it's on me, and you can maybe not talk to me anymore. <laughs> Or, but I don't. I don't do that as much as I, I, I could. I could see that Mary pro when he probably reached out to him uh, over yeah. Instagram. He'll be like, uh, "My kid's sick," and he would. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on Zoom. It's on Zoom. Yeah. Can... <laughs> it's like no, no. She's still too sick. I don't she's like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Around if she's Just in case it's in the air. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. No, but that's a yeah. that's a good thing. I was I was actually just talking about my husband about this because um, we have people that come to the door all the time to try to sell you solar panels or whatever and i've always yeah. been like oh like super nice and finally i'm at the board it's like no the, oh can we show you? no bye and i'm just like <laughs> like i'm just tired of this whole yeah. facade i have to lie to you it's like you're an adult i'm an adult i don't yeah, want course. you here bye bye <laughs> and they're like you know we live in this really consumerist culture where they want you buying everything all the time and i i feel for those poor folks that are like yeah at that yeah. point in their life where they're they have to sell so desperately or directly where they're coming to your door but yeah. right it's also like hey man don't ever come to my door <laughs> unless you're my family or my friends and I, it's just how i want it i'm never going to be rude to anybody that's just yeah. doing their yeah. job right. um but being direct and not having to not having this whole like makeup yeah. i've done the whole i've got a daughter my daughter's sleeping i've got to be you know and yeah. all that I'm, no but in yeah. texas coming to someone's door is a little scary i'm not gonna lie i'll have, say i'll say yeah you have absolutely. some options here you don't know who the hell is gonna open that door i'd say like firm and boundaried if that's a word but uh just yeah it's just like oh man thanks you know what there's no chance i'm gonna buy anything from you today or any day <laughs> and so uh, I hope it's not too hot out there. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I still need to rain there. for an audition, so you might want to. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. 
That's yeah. funny. All right. So what do I got? I got one that says, uh, oh, so I read somewhere or heard something, or maybe I'm just making this up, that uh, you, like many of us growing up, uh, watch wrestling. Yeah, so, totally. What would you, I talked to them. Yeah, I think yeah, you did. I, that or I made it up, one of the two. <laughs> no, no, you did. You did for sure. Um, uh, and I, I talked about that on a podcast too recently because that's how – and I didn't know this until years after, but the the program that was on right before WWF wrestling in, in Maryland that, that came on super late at like 11 or something. And so I'd be watching it in my room, trying desperately to stay up. And it felt like some Saturdays it didn't even come on like other, it, it was just a crap shoot trying to schedule my, my wrestling watching. And I was, but I was committed. And so around 9 PM stand up, this stand up show would come on. Like I saw carrot tops first ever TV performance, oh. which is crazy. Like I, he was, and he was awesome. I remember watching him just being like, what is this guy on? <laughs> <laughs> He's insane. And I love it. Um, but it, I watched so many comedians so many bad comedians, so many good comedians, so many, all of it, all of it. And it was all in preparation for like, right after that dumb stand up comedy show that I had to sit through <laughs> WWF would like light it up and the stage would go nuts. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was like indirectly, I I'd ended up watching two hours of what I ended up sort of doing. And, you know, so what would I'd your never... restaurant name be? Oh man, my wrestler name would be like the, the tea tree to, toe job or something. <laughs> It'd be a weird one that people would be like, ew. And then I'd be gross on stage. I'd put my feet in people's mouths or something. And everything. <laughs> my that finishing move. a lot of money now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. A lot of endorsements, a lot You'd of Instagram followers. Ahead of your time. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd be in the ring. I'd talk a lot of smack, and then I'd like my finishing move would be like putting my toes in their mouth, and they'd be like, Ugh! and they like it would knock them out. <laughs> you call it the pedicure. That's the yeah, yeah, the yeah. pedicure. Move. But it's not curing yeah. anything. Sleep with a petty. Oh no, it's the man petty. And then I'm like, <laughs> my fingers in, and then stick my toes in. Oh yeah, I, I can still do it. I can still do it. <laughs> I start training now. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, this is the time to reassess your life right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually after this podcast, people do that. Yes. People always, yeah. This is a common side effect of your podcast. Is they're like, what do I want? You got a free therapy session. You're welcome. Thank Please you reassess very your much. life. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a question. Yes, yeah, you said you had to sit yeah. through stand-up comics uh, to watch that show. Who's your favorite stand-up comedian now or in the past? Dead or alive? Yeah, it's probably Pryor. I think that Richard Pryor was like uh, bringing it all together in a way because there are so many, like I love Bill Hicks and I love the, you know, the, the comics that were saying something with the time on stage mm -hmm. that, it wasn't just for the sake of a laugh, but you would get a laugh and it would roll through like actually sitting there and thinking about like, Oh yeah, that is true. Why does the government do that? Or, Oh yeah. Why don't UFOs talk to us or <laughs> whatever? <laughs> and um, prior did it from like a, a perspective that I had no background on, you know, he was a black American living in this country and living through whatever he was living through. And I was a white kid in Maryland, but his stories as he's telling them were at the same time as being the most hilarious thing you've heard or seen. And plus the profanity, like I was into it. <laughs> and, but he was also saying something, you know, he was, he was talking about the disparity between rich and poor and all this other stuff and, and the racial relations and whatnot going on. And I mean, he's, he, yeah, he's just a master. I don't know what years it was. Cause I know that he, you know, he has his own right. assortment of, of issues and stuff, but, 
he was the one that like watching him, I was like, Oh, you're a pure genius. There's nothing. You're not coming from anybody else. You're right. you and you're crushing it. And then you watch one of his movies and you'd be like, Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> don't act. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, don't act. <laughs> That's not totally true. He was okay in some stuff. He was like, Brewster's Millions. He was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so we're going to be positive. Best compliment you have ever received, whether it's a family, Uh, friend, whatever. Sure. On my way, I know this one right away because I felt great. And it's hard to do that sometimes. (laughs) Um, On my way to an audition for Wrecked, which is... Mm -hmm a show that I got, which was great, but I'm walking down. um, I want to say it's Melrose and I'm walking past like the big Paramount lot and you know, everything in this town, like when you want to be a working actor, it's kind of, you're mesmerized by it for a long time. And so I was walking to an audition and trying to feel, trying to feel good, uh, but mostly nervous, butterflies and just being like, Oh, this is going to be scary. And I hear someone yell something and I'm walking down the sidewalk. And so I just like, it came from the street. And so I kind of look and it's a dude hanging out of his car as he's driving. And he points at me and he's just like, you're my man crush Monday. And he had the biggest smile. And I was like, what? And he repeated (laughs) it. And I was like, (laughs) <laughs> wow yeah it just like i don't know it transcended uh anything it wasn't a sexual per- it wasn't anything it was just like he was just saying like hey man nice and i was <laughs> i was so so appreciative of it and forever that will be my my absolute top nice. uh yeah for sure. That's that's perfect. I like how you just came out that you already knew that. Like, I love that you didn't have to think about it. Because I'll never forget it. And it was like, uh, dude, I expect like to be yelled at in static way or like, you know, like someone to be like, Hey, get out of the way. And then I'm like, okay, (laughs) but this was being yelled at. And then I look, it's an African American dude in a BMW, a nice new car and a nice looking young dude. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> did I do something <laughs> that I should? And he was just like, and it was just this such a sweet, positive moment. And I was like, God, I'll never, ever in my life forget that this made me feel good. Because you do get, you know, you get uh, compliments from friends and family all the time, and they they have to love you. So it's like, all right. <laughs> but when a dude in his car loves you, it's like. <laughs> you always wonder if it's like that Men in Black, uh, Men in Black, uh, uh, was it Men in Black 3, where they're like, oh, is this the universe where this and this happens? Like, what if in another universe the guy didn't say it and you didn't get the job? Like, that's a totally different realm. Like, totally. that could have been the changing point. 100%. That would have been Easily. totally legit. Like, that was the point that, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> that man changed my life. <laughs> and I owe him. I owe him all of the money that I made in that show. <laughs> I hope he never finds me. (laughs) I hope I never see that kind gentleman again in my life. (laughs) Hey, if you're watching the show, um, (laughs) reach out to us. We know where to find him. And he owes you a lot of money. (laughs) All right. What's your uh, dream role in a movie? Dream role would be... hmm. And what kind of movie here? Yeah, you want to be a leading man? Do you want to be an action star? I mean, the only reason that I would ever say that I want to be a leading man is because I like work. I like the whole part of it. The steady paycheck? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. (laughs) But I like the the action of it. Like, one thing about Leaf, for example, when we were doing Crashing, is like, You know, you show up to work at seven o'clock in the morning, they put you in the trailer and they've got you. Mm -hmm. That's not just crashing. That's every job. It's like once you're there, production's just like, well, we're paying you. So we own you for this day. And you can sit there because you're a supporting cast member. And so 
on whatever day that is, there's an issue with Pete and his hair wasn't getting right or, you know, his, his lines, he flow or whatever it is. And it's taking longer and you sit and you're not inspired by sitting. You're inspired by working. I want to be up on my feet and I want to be in every single scene for any reason what's like challenge me tell me to cry i don't know how to do that i'll figure it out uh you know f- like let's do a fight scene i'll kick anybody's ass I don't <laughs> in real life just do it <laughs> we'll just bleed over just just keep filming yeah. keep filming <laughs> yeah don't stop rolling on this uh <laughs> this that's is gonna like be to evidence your, that's what i liked about your character in flaked uh with with uh will arnett i think I, that whole show was like i I, I loved your character because you didn't know where you were going. You could turn into yeah. going into a fight one moment to being hugging one moment, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it was definitely a different realm. Yeah. Thanks. I like that for uh, so many reasons because cooler. You're right. He was off kilter. He's like a beach liver, yeah. you know, from Venice. And you, those guys are like, uh, they live in weird places like in backyards and they're doing, they're doing what they can to live that lifestyle. Like they will sacrifice everything. There are people that have a ton of money, but they're just like, I only want to live on the beach as close to the beach as I can. So I live in this person's guest house. <laughs> Cause it's, that's what that's the like, life. Yeah. You could buy your own house and they're like, no, nah, I don't want a house. I just want to live close to the beach and it's like that's cooler <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i knew i knew cool. uh I'm, I'm from the coast originally and i knew a shrimper that um his whole idea was that he wanted to live on his boat and live right by the beach so yeah. he would go pick up shrimp for about two or three hours come back and then drink all day and he was like that's the life life that's like that's, the, it. that's it yeah, yeah. totally like wow like port aransas or what part of the coast? corpus christi so corpus yeah, close, sure. so close to port aransas yeah yeah, I spent a lot of time down there. Uh, we drive through Corpus because you got to get through Corpus to get to Port A, right? Uh, well, you hit depending what direction you're coming from. If you're coming from the okay. north, from you're Austin. Gonna first, yeah, you're going to hit Port A yeah. first. So, yeah, yeah. But Corpus is the big city, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, that big city down there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so my next question is, uh, which I like this one. I think because I'm old and I like asking this question. Um, Phone call or text message? Which do you prefer? Uh, uh, text message. Nice. Really? Yes. Yes. Because I'm so happy if, you said that. Yeah, I, I did. If you call, I'm mad. <laughs> You're I look that at my phone. Like, yeah. No, I'm like, why? Why? It, it, it had better be an emergency. <laughs> to me, it uh, depends. It depends on who's calling. For sure. Yeah, but definitely. I agree. I agree. Ninety-five percent of the time, I prefer text message. But there's a few Just people text I'm like, me. you better call. Just call. Yeah, fire off a warning shot. Text me before you call me, and I'm fine. Oh yep. my god, my dad does you know? that. Don't do that. <laughs> no, my dad yeah. does the whole text me before you call me. I may be busy. I'm like, if you're busy, you won't answer. Like that's how phones exactly. work. <laughs> that's true. That is the more yeah. That's the direct way. But uh, this is like the this is the next level of uh, etiquette when it comes to communication. <laughs> You're like, hey, firing a warning shot. You're around to you talk. <laughs> uh, no, I'm so happy you said that. I do that too. I ask people, is it a good time to call? No, all right, that's yeah, fine. Oh. yeah. totally. Because yeah. we've all been in that position where it's like you accidentally pick up the phone. Or yes. you pick up the phone thinking like, okay, let me, okay, we need to talk about this. And I know he wants to talk about this or she wants to talk about this. So I'll answer and we'll get it done. Okay, cool. Hello? And, and then within the first few seconds, something else that you haven't done yep. or something walks through the door and you're like, oh, I can't. That's- okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So um, you moved to Austin at the age of 19. Yeah. Um, do you ever think of coming back to Austin, moving back to Austin now? Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably go out somewhere not in Austin. Uh, I'd go to like Wimberley or, you know, nice. Buda. Yeah. I'd go you somewhere else. You could own Buda. You could own Buda. Yeah. I want to buy Buda. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. I want to buy Buda. <laughs> uh, all of it. Um, 
We'll I don't keep know, it keep man. Going I, already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell you real estate differences. I mean, you could literally <laughs> buy like a two hundred acre ranch with some of the costs in LA. <laughs> Dude, that's what I want. I mean, that's the truth of it. Um, I don't see myself coming back into Austin as much as I love that place, and like it was six years of my my favorite years of you know in, through my twenties and met friends I'll have forever. I'm actually going to go and meet a friend of mine, Moses, who still lives in Austin, and we're going to meet up somewhere in the middle, um, like next month. So it's lifelong, you know, family, family time, friends. But what, the last time I was there, probably three or four years ago, so it's been a while. It's just it's one of those cities that changes like under your feet. And yes. I, when I moved there in '99 or 2000 or whatever it was. Everyone was like, oh, man, you got here 10 years too late. It used to be so cool. And I was like, dude, this is great. You're wrong. I love it here. And I did. I loved it. Solid. For six years, I loved every minute of that town. I rode my bike everywhere. Everything's – that's where I became vegetarian. And Austin's a huge reason why because uh, I never seen alternative eating until I moved to, to Austin. So – yeah, it was a great place to grow up, and uh, and that last time that I went back, it was just like, whew, there's these all these new buildings that I hate about LA are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you go to San Antonio. San Antonio's about ten I years love behind San Austin. Yeah. <laughs> I love San Antonio. That's where Moses is from originally. So, oh, also, yeah, yeah. See, okay. we're about ten years behind Austin. It's the best time to be here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> When this pandemic is over, and I don't know, things are getting better now, but what's one thing you are looking forward to do that you haven't done or that you were wanting to? Yeah. Um, so my daughter and I had, uh, I had her for spring break last year, and it, we alternate that holiday, her mom and I. And so we had planned, and I worked so hard on all the reservations for it and everything else. But I had a trip planned to Japan. I gave it to nice. her. Yeah. I gave yeah. it to her like for Christmas. You know, I wrapped up a little thing that was like, we're going to Japan and gave it to her. And she was stoked. And I was so stoked. <clears throat> Traveling with her is just one of my favorite things. And we used to do it a ton. Right. Uh, obviously, everyone stopped doing it now. But I'd like to get that back up. I'd like to find a way. I don't know. I mean, I was working all the time then. That's like the year after crashing and wrecked and everything else. Right. Now, not having worked for a year, it's like, I can take you to Chinatown. Like, <laughs> you know, we can drive and just like pretend we're somewhere else, but we, I, I don't know how we're going to get all those yeah. signs about protect your kidneys. Don't get, don't get caught. You know? <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Watch your back. Yeah, we'll go to little Tokyo, and I'll just be like, "See, see, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, here we are." Oh, but that, that actually, is so. But that is so true. Traveling with a kid is so much. And people always complain about it, but it's so fun because you see things through their eyes. You're like, I would never yeah. have noticed that. Exactly. Yeah, and her love, I uh, think, of Japan is through the animation world. Right. So we had like the Studio Ghibli museum stuff set up and man we were we were like stoked for that and i mean the pandemic hit we that was like for april so march yeah yeah march march hit and then everyone was like oh no oh no oh no and i i kept i i still just i was like i think japan will be fine i think (laughs) we're (laughs) <laughs> just last like January uh, and February, I was in Japan. I just literally came back in and February then and then the pan of, yeah, it, it, I, I caused it. <laughs> yeah, but, I brought that. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he's coronavirus. Yeah, he's the spreader, <laughs> super spreader, in Antonio. You are patient yeah. zero. <laughs> I got it. I got it in the US. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we do we do very much appreciate you being here. We're going to ask you the last question we ask every guest. When someone Googles you, what do you want your autocomplete to be? George, oh, William, that's, Basil. Yeah, that's really good. What's your auto? What's your autocomplete? Um, I saw a really funny one the other day. 
I can't remember what it was. It was about an actor, and I was like, oh, yeah, they do kind of look like that. Where it was like, <laughs> you know, um, George William Basil saved how many people's lives? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Nice. <laughs> People be like, good question. And then they click on that, and then it's just like, none. You're like, <laughs> we may never yeah. know. We may yeah. never know. It's just question marks. <laughs> like your your whole screen goes into like question marks. Like weird. You're like I give you viruses. <laughs> that becomes the virus you're known for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, the George William Basil virus. <laughs> That's right. phenomenal. Well, we definitely yeah. appreciate you coming to the show. We are Thank huge so fans of you. We can't wait to see yeah. your continued success. As soon as um, California opens up, you're going to get booked on everything, and uh, you can remember the little people. And I my will. Light just I will spin off randomly. Yeah, I did. I guess that shows shows out. It's like, well, I, guess <laughs> I, sh- I guess I should have paid that bill. All along. <laughs> uh, uh, but we thank, thank you very you much. No, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You're both really lovely, and I, I wish you the the same good luck and fortune and success and everything. And don't ever hesitate to reach out, especially if you're ever here. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. LA. Yeah. All righty. Well, everybody, cool. that's our show. All right. I got to install an antivirus software. I don't want shot <laughs> Bezos. <laughs> no, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be on the next coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. Uh, but hey, on the bright side, we did not make our guests feel like shit. <laughs> this, <time. laughs> this is true. They don't fool me once. We learned. <laughs> well that was uh, that was a fun episode um i'm so glad everyone stayed and watched and watching this outro um if you had fun if you liked it please share it please comment uh leave us a message drop us a line uh leave a little youtube comment please be nice and kind um uh, but as always if you loved it please share it with your friends family and enemies this is the episode for today we'll see y'all next time i'm mary picarazzi and i'm tammy Roda.